Bulldogs, this is Principal Golden, and I am excited to come to you today to talk about the great things that we put in place for your in-person return on Plan B at Butler High School. Today we're going to talk about a variety of things that's going to make sure you feel comfortable and safe as you enter the hallways of Butler. We will speak to bathrooms, transitions, classrooms, cafeteria, and many different things that we put in line and in place to make sure you are safe. So please make sure you listen carefully. Please make sure that you take notes in your head as we are expecting you to follow all of our policies and guidelines so that each and every student can come to school and return home safe each and every day. Prior to entering the building, each student, teacher, and staff member must wear a mask. All masks must be placed on your face and worn throughout the entire day with the exception of lunch and getting water from the water fountain. Once you put on your mask, you will enter the building. When you get ready to enter the building, your temperature will be taken and you will receive a symptom screener. Once you come into the front door, before you enter, we're going to be taking your temperature. Once we determine that's normal, we're going to ask you a series of questions on our symptom screener sheet. These are things that will be, have you had a fever? Have you had COVID recently? Have you been around anyone that's had COVID? Are you having a cough? headache, vomiting, diarrhea, any of those six symptoms we need to know about and it's important that you answer those as straightforward as you can so that we can determine whether it's safe for you to be in the building. That helps us protect you and protect all the people around you as well. So one other thing I need to talk to you all about is transitions between classes because this is probably out of all the things I'm going to be talking to you about on this video, this is probably the part that is the most different. So when you move between the buildings now, all of the hallways are currently one direction. So if you look as you walk through, you're going to find that there are red arrows along the floor. That's the flow that you have to follow and it might get a little bit complicated depending on how you have to move around the building. So for example, I'm standing here outside the 200 hallway. If you have a class in the 200 hallway and your next class is now in the 500 hallway, that means you're gonna have to follow the arrows all the way around the building, all the way down to the other lobby and around. What that means is you need to plan to move quickly between your classes. You can't hang out. You know, you're not gonna be able to socialize in the hallways while you're here, unfortunately. That's partially because we're gonna to have to ask everybody to maintain their social distancing practices. In other words, you've gotta be six feet apart from other people in the hallways. But on top of that, you're also going to have to move quicker because you might have a little bit further to go than you're used to. It's also important to keep in mind that bathrooms will not be open during class transitions. In other words, you're going to have to wait until you get to that point in your class period, which every class will have, in order to be able to use the restroom. So move quickly, maintain your social distance, and get on to your next class. We're asking that you make sure you wear your mask as you move through the building. All right, so I just also want to talk to you a little bit today about how the bathroom procedure is going to look, or the restroom procedure, because it's going to look a little bit different. Again, you will not be able to use the restroom during your class transitions. In other words, these are going to be closed up as you move between your classes, but you will have a designated time during each class period in which you can go and use the restroom. We got to follow a lot of the same guidelines that we're following within the classroom. We're only going to be allowed to have two people in the restroom at a time. So when you show up, You'll see that there are six foot markings along the floor. We're gonna ask you to line up at those and you'll be allowed to go in. All the restrooms this year are gonna be one way. In other words, you're gonna see a sign. It'll say in or here. You cannot go in the other side. You'll go through, do whatever you gotta do. Please make sure you wash your hands. Not that you weren't already doing that anyways, but please make sure you wash them and head out the exit door. Also, you do not have to go to the restroom if you do not want to during your class. So in other words, when we, we arrive at the time you're supposed to be going to the restroom, you can also let your teacher know you prefer to remain in the room and you'll be allowed to do so.
Hey guys, I just want to talk to you for a few minutes about how we're going to do the water fountains this year. So obviously you've heard from several people about how this is going to look a lot different. So I just kind of want to go over some of the rules specific to the water fountains, um, kind of make sure we, we do this safely. First of all, um, you are not going to be able to use the water fountains directly anymore. In other words, you can't go up, get your mouth all up on the thing, turn the water thing on. You're going to be required to use either a refillable bottle or we're going to have some cups here at the school that we'll provide to you all. Um, also, the water fountains will not be available during class transitions. In other words, you won't be able to stop, go up, use them in, in between classes, but rather you're going to have to wait. You'll have a designated time during each one of your class periods in which you'll be able to go and either fill up a water bottle, which is what I recommend, or to use a cup to get a drink of water. Okay, I'm Mr. Tenzis, and today I'm going to talk about arrivals, departures, and cafeteria procedures. So let's first talk about arrivals. When you come on campus, there's basically four ways you can get here. You can get here at the front of the building as a car rider. You can get here where we're at right now as a bus rider. You can get on the back side of the building as a driver, or you can walk on campus. Now you're going to have four ways to enter the building. You're going to either come through the gym, uh, back here, the gym door. You can come through the front door if you're a car rider. You can come through a door to the cafeteria on one side, the cafeteria lobby, and then on the other side, the cafeteria lobby. There's one thing we're going to do with everybody, and it goes without saying, but we're going to say it anyway. you got to stay six feet apart at all times, and you have to wear your mask. So you're going to be asked questions when you get on campus. Everybody's going to be asked the same questions. Now, you can actually access the screener questions on the Butler website, which we will show you. If you can see this right here, symptom screener, when you click that right there, and you scroll down, you get to the symptom screener open. And what you do is you just go in here and type in your ID number and answer the questions. Why that is important. When you come to the campus, you can show us your green check. If you don't have this already with a green check, we're going to ask you the questions and then you answer them. Or we can actually give you a little document that shows that and you can scan it and then you can answer the questions electronically yourself. Bottom line is, once you answer those questions, you will also be scanned for a temperature and your temperature must be below 100.4. If your temperature is 100.4 or above, you're automatically going to ask, be asked to go to the isolation room. If you're a car driver, if you drive your car, you cannot get out of your car until you have these things done, the questions and the temperature. And if you are a walker, you must do the same thing. You must come to the front door and these questions and your temperature. Everybody gets their temperature checked. Everybody must answer the questions. Everybody must have a mask, and you, that's the way it's going to be. Okay? Now, second part of arrival to school. Can't congregate. Cannot go to the restrooms. Can't hang out. You got to go directly to your classroom, or you got to go directly to the cafeteria to get your breakfast. And when you go to the cafeteria, you got to go directly to your classroom. So there's not going to be any hanging out in the halls. There's not going to be any uh, visits anywhere in the building other than direct route to your class or breakfast and then to your class. Okay? And if you are late, if you're late, you can only come through the front door where you'll have the scanning questions and uh, your temperature will be taken. So that's basically it with regards to arrival. Just to remember, bus riders, you'll be checked here. Everybody else that's a car rider in the front, drop off, you'll be checked at the front, stay in your car. If you're a driver, stay in your car until you get everything checked off. And if you're a walker, you come to your door and you will be asked these questions by a screening team. If you are a car driver and you are late to school, you call the front office like you always would. You must remain in that car until someone comes out and scans you and asks the same questions itself, and then you can park. Uh, but if you're late and a driver, you must wait uh, to be scanned and temperature checked as well.
Okay, so now we're at the cafeteria and we're going to talk breakfast and lunch. So breakfast, like I said earlier, when you arrive on campus, you'll go directly into the cafeteria and get your breakfast and go directly back to class or to class. Now, with regards to lunches, it's going to be a little bit different. We have to stagger lunches by classrooms. Typically, we're going to have about six classrooms at a time going to the cafeteria from different points in the building. And you will be escorted by your staff member, your teacher, and there will be staff members on duty monitoring, making sure that you're six feet apart and you're wearing your mask. When you get to the cafeteria, the first thing you're going to do... Sanitize. Then we're going to walk in where there will be markers to show you exactly where to go. So we're going in. So here we come into the cafeteria, and if you notice, we have six feet distance markers. Everybody should be six feet apart, not bunched up. And when you get to this point where the line is, you stop. Then you have four choices. If you can pan to the floor, you'll see there are arrows on the floor that go to the four different lines. So I'm going to go to line number three. Line number three, line number four, you go through, you get your food, you come out, you pay, and as it, as it currently stands, it's no touch. That could change, I don't know, but it's no touch right now. You pay, and then you follow the arrows straight out, maintaining your six foot distance. Obviously, they're covered up right now, but there are arrows on the floor that you will follow. And like I said, your teachers will escort you back, no stops, straight back to the classroom where you will eat your lunch. And that's how we're going to operate with regards to lunches for a while. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Everything's subject to change, but as it stands now, that's how we're going to do it. Okay, let's talk about departure at the end of the day. I'm standing right here in front of the doors in front of the cafeteria that lead directly by the amphitheater that go to the student parking lot. This will be one of the doors where you could actually depart at the end of the day. We're going to try to maintain traffic where everybody goes in the same direction. So just so you'll know, this is what we have to do. We have to stagger departure times two. Now, School technically ends at 145 right now. Buses roll at 145 right now. So we're going to have to start our staggered schedule earlier than that, and we're going to start it at 130. The first rooms, for example, the first areas that will depart are going to be the gym and the lower 900 hall. And then we're going to work our way back across campus by hallways two minutes apart until we get to the 800 hall which is right over there behind the cafeteria at 137 the 800 hall will dismiss that gives the 800 hall and everybody else eight minutes more to get to where they gotta be so that gives them eight minutes to get to the buses and then exit out the doors preferably traveling in the same direction and going out the nearest exit door so there won't be any stops, there won't be any congregation. You got to go straight to your method of travel with regards to departure at the end of the day. So basically, that covers it. That covers arrivals, cafeteria and breakfast, and departure time. Thank you. Hi, Butler High School family parents, students, staff, wanted to take a moment just to talk about um, some of the things that you will see when you come into our building. And one of those things is how differently our classrooms will look. Our classrooms are actually going to be configured so that we are making sure that we are social distance between each other. So if you look at this, we actually went out and we have a six foot pole. And with this, 
we actually took the time to make sure that each of our desks are going to be distance apart. When you arrive into your classroom, remember classrooms are going to be 15 students or less. When you arrive into your classroom, you're going to be assigned to sit in certain rows only. The rows will be labeled with either red tabs or black tabs. Each block will sit in a different row. So you will not sit right beside a peer. You will have six feet of distance between you. This is going to happen in every class that you enter at Butler High School. We're going to make sure that we're following all of the guidelines to make sure that you all are safe and to make sure that everyone here is following everything we have to do to make sure that we are successful during this time. And also, once we leave out of the classroom, in the hallways, when you go through the cafeteria line and come back into the classroom, make sure that we are always practicing our social distance, okay? I know that you all are going to be excited and happy to see your friends and excited to see your teachers, but we have to respect our space guidelines and we have to make sure that we are staying apart and that we can have conversations but we're wearing our masks and that we're social distancing. If you have any questions about anything that we presented today, please make sure that you email the school. Can't wait to see you guys. Bulldog family, this is Miss Panky here standing behind the isolation room. Hopefully you guys will not make it here, right? But if a student or staff member reports to school and happens to have a temperature of 100.4 or greater, they will be asked to report to the isolation room. And here, we will take the proper uh, precautions. Staff and students will have on mask, appropriate PPE gear. Um, parents of students will be called and informed that their child is uh, displaying symptoms and needs to be picked up immediately okay we are hoping that uh, all the symptom screeners that are done ahead of time will prevent all of our students and staff from making it to this isolation room but just in case we wanted to show you guys where the isolation room will be housed um, throughout the rest of the school year Hey Bulldog family, this is Miss Panky again, stepping into inside one of the classrooms. Just wanted to show you all a couple of items that will be provided to our staff and families and students. Um, as you can see here, we have our masks. So each uh, staff member and our students will be provided with these cloth masks for independent use. Each classroom will also have a bottle of hand sanitizer that will be kept with the teacher, um, but students will be allowed to independently use this. I will say, family, if students have their own individual bottles of hand sanitizer, please bring that with them to school each and every day. Last but not least, we also have a container of alcohol wipes, which will be used by classroom teachers and or students as needed to wipe down any of their personal areas or uh, shared spaces, um, again, and that will be as needed. Another thing I briefly wanted to discuss with you guys is in between class changes, our classroom teachers will be wiping down the desk. Um, and that is just another safety measure that we are using. And then at the end of the day, each custodian has a designated area um, that they are responsible for where they will enter into each and every hallway and each and every classroom and make sure that they are sanitizing and clearly wiping down um, all of the classroom spaces and shared spaces that students and staff members have been um, exposed to throughout the day. Today, you learned some very important safety protocols that each and every one of us must follow. Once again, we are excited and overjoyed to have you back in the building in person. However, it is my responsibility, our staff responsibility, and your responsibility to stay as safe as possible. Please make sure that you review this video many times so that you can clearly understand all of the wonderful things that we put in place to make sure you and all of your fellow classmates are safe. We look forward to seeing some of you the week of December 14th for end of course testing. And the rest of you, we are excited for January 5th when you will walk into our doors. Thank you so much for listening. 
Thank you so much for paying attention. But most of all, thank you so much for being a bulldog.